Love lives in me. Amen. We have to acknowledge that the God that we serve is an awesome God. Awesome God. When I turn and look around and see all that is happening in the world today, I have to say God is an awesome God. Amen. 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 We are seeing Satan run rampant in today's society. People have lost their mind. Shooting out of control. Violence just seems to be rampant. Now all these things are predicted. And, and even then, the word tells us, still yet, is not the end. And you say to yourself, can it get any worse? Somebody say, I love that. Have mercy. Have mercy. But I'm so glad that he keeps a lot of respect. I wish I had a spell for this morning. And when I say it, he what? He watches me. Amen. We praise God for you this morning. And we give high praise to those watching by media. And as always, we try to give you a word from the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. We want to talk to you this morning. For two weeks I've been playing with this in the mind. A lot of times when God gives you something, you can start writing it so much and you can't see it and you don't understand it. And but the Lord always tells you when he gets through with it, it's for purpose. Amen. And then you can see some of those things. Amen. I say it in a way you can understand it, and I'm probably not talking to anyone in here, probably, but Water problem. But when you bake a cake, for those who like to bake, for those who can bake, be quiet until I say some more baking. <laughs> Amen. You can't see it, it rides unless you look through the window. You can't see the finished product until it's finished baked. Amen. 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 And I really remember Big Mama used to tell me. And tell us in the house, don't walk through the kitchen. All right. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And I can say, why? <coughs> huh? Because I don't want the cake to fall. But I got some people here know about baking. Amen. Amen. They say they can bake, they know about it. Amen. Praise God this morning. We want to talk to you for the book of Matthews as the Lord gives others. Matthew's the 25th chapter. I want to read 1 through 13 with you. New King James Version. Matthew's the 25th chapter. Begin with the first verse. Matthew's the 25th chapter. Begin with the first verse. The word of God for the children of God. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered and said, No. Let there not be enough for us and you, but rather go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready with him went with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. And afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, 
open to us. He answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, no more. No power. No power. No interest. No interest. Look at the neighbor on the other side and tell him. Neighbor? Neighbor. Or neighbor. Or neighbor. Or neighbor. No more. No, no oil. oil. No power. No power. No interest. No interest. You may be seated. No oil. No power. You can't get in. When we look at this, Parable, it gives us a lot of intel. We know the bridegroom represents Christ. Amen. And we realize that there were some wise virgins and some foolish ones. The foolish ones had a tendency to always be in the hair. But they did not properly prepare to go to the wedding. They wanted to be at the wedding. But they were not properly prepared. <laughs> not only that, but they anticipated that it was only going to be a short time that they would be at the wedding. Now realizing that it could go on for a while. Lastly, they made a lot of mistakes because they were not properly prepared. You can go to church. And if you go to church and you stand and look at the clock, you're not prepared. Amen. Your mind is not set on Jesus. It's set on what you're going to do when you leave. And you've already prepared what you're going to do before you leave there. Not understanding. That the bridegroom can come before you get where you go. Amen. I wish I had a witness this morning. Amen. First of all, we got to look at this. Point number one. Don't stop praying. Amen. Do not stop praying. Prayers are a test of your faith. Or a test of your faith. Whether you like it or not, you're going to go through trials and tribulation. Amen. You can sit back and deny and say, I'm not going to happen to me, but you're not in charge of you. Right. You may think you are. Amen. And when these trials come upon you, if there's no oil in your vessel, Your flame ain't gonna go out. Amen. I laugh a lot of times because all of us here fear something. Some fear snakes, Amen. lizards. Amen. <laughs> Whatever it may be, somebody fears something. I fear that old chamber they gotta put you through <laughs> so they get a test. Come in my arm. Only thing I want to know is when I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and you find out that if you don't have no oil in your vessel, the fear will consume you. You got to know how to combat those fears. First of all, look at this here. Tell somebody your faith will be tested. In the most in opposite time, your faith will be tested. Doesn't it amaze you that you can feel good right now? And the next minute, you don't know whether you're here or go. Because you have no control over it. Only you can determine the outcome. Yes. Yes. Are you going to fight the good fight? Or are you going to try to count it the wrong way? Don't stop praying. Then I 
I got to encourage you this morning. We're talking about the miracles. Stay prayed up. No, I said don't stop praying. But you got to stay prayed up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You got to remember, do your trials and tribulation, the most ultimate thing. God loves you. Did he not say to you, I put no more on you? And you can laugh. You have to remember how special you are. Come on and work with me just a little bit. Do like I did. Woo, yeah, it's sweet. Come on, do it. Come on, do it. Somebody here been kissing a week. Come on.
In other words, you're bold, you're charged, you're high pass. Then you got wicked in each other. Then you can find out where you're at in your relationship. Somebody don't know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Now you got to listen to the talk. You got to talk. And you find out that you got more in common than you think. You forgot some things. The parable of the ten virgin was about marriage. Custom of the Jews, they explained, on the day of Christ coming back. We have to see the nature of Christianity here. Christians, sincere Christians, are wild virgins. Hypocrites are the foolish ones. Many have less of profession of their faith, but have not in their hearts the knowledge and the self-revolution which is needed to carry them out. There are many people go to the motion to say they are Christians. But when the time of a storm, you find out who they are. We talked about it this morning in Sunday school character. Amen. We got some good characters. As long as the light's on you, you're good. But what happens happen when the light go out? We don't think nobody watch you. When you're away from home and you don't know nobody, is your light on? Is your vessel burning bright, man? The Bible tells us that they all slumbered and slept. In other words, Matthew 24, I can't get you. That Bible study of wisdom. Walk with me now. Matthew 24, and the 36 through the 37 verse, I know you got the Bible out. It said, but of that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as of the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. He's going to crack the sky at the most unusual time. Amen. But notice this, the Bible tells you that I won't see it. Are you listening to me? First of all, we have to understand the particulars in which we see. It tells us that at midnight, a cry, a loud shout was heard. The bridegroom is coming. He already told you you must work while in the day. Amen. Told you that the night is coming, that no man can work. In other words, how much time do you give to God? God mercy. How much time do you give to God? We keep saying things that are frustrating, like, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. And I like this here. Do you not think other people are busy too? Amen. Listen to me when you say I'm busy. What do that mean? Does it mean that I don't want to be bothered? Does it mean that I want to deal with you when I have time? But what happened if I don't have the time you got? First of all, let's look at this. They heard the bridegroom. The request by the foolish ones who had not prepared, who had not worked for God's kingdom, the first thing they cried out was, give me some of your all. Hmm. In other words, I'm trying to say to you, mama and daddy has already prayed for you. When you are grown, you are a child, you are the answer for yourself. Amen. You will need your oil to be lit Amen. and burning. Amen. We have to remember this morning, they cried out, give me some of your oil. Mm -hmm. Mama done prayed for you. Daddy done prayed for you. The question is, when are you going to learn to pray for yourself? Amen. First of all, they heard the words say to them, no, not going to share my oil. No, you can't have any of my oil. The next question was, go find somebody to buy some oil for. In other words, you need to go find somebody else to pray for you. Can't do you no good. The master comes. 
The scripture tells us that there is a symbolic meaning about this oil. The oil is always associated with the Holy Spirit. Somebody ain't with me this morning. It's seen as a sacramental element. From, from, from the story of Noah and the dove bringing back the olive leaf to the anointing of the priests and kings, oil is a powerful symbol of God's presence and blessing. Come on, sir. It is also used for healing and as a sign of joy. And gladness. Yeah. Anybody got any joy this morning? Amen. Anybody got any gladness this morning? Amen. 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 Or is referred to as anointing oil. Yeah. It represents the anointing of Jesus as the Christ, yeah. which means the anointed one. Yeah. Jesus was the anointed one. Uh huh. Or represents the presence of the Holy Spirit. And as the anointing of God's chosen ones, anybody chosen this morning, or holds a deep symbolic meaning in the Bible, representing the presence of the Holy Spirit and the anointing of the chosen one. It is used for healing, for joy, and a sign of blessing and favor. In New Testament, or is associated with healing and the anointing of the sick. But we have to remember that it is anointed, and you have been sealed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. It still yet meaning if you don't have no oil in your life, right. not going to work. Amen. Because it's a prayer of faith, tell somebody, yes. that's going to do the healing. Got to walk in today. Amen, amen. We like to say things like, I'm anointed and appointed. Question to who anointed you? <laughs> who appointed you? If it was not for the Lord who appointed you and anointed you, you're working amen. in vain. Additionally, or symbolize the spiritual cleansing and the rejuvenating that occurs in the work of the Holy Spirit. There is something special when someone anoints you with oil. Amen. And there is even special when you feel the presence of God surrounding you. God gives you a peace that suppresses all understanding. Despite what's going on, you are at peace with yourself. I wish I had somebody this morning. Yes, as oil soothes and anoints the body, the Holy Spirit brings comfort and renewal to the soul. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that believers can experience inner healing and respiration. All serves as a reminder of God's faithfulness. Oh, somebody. And his desire to restore his people. Just as all brings life to dry and withered skin, God's presence brings joy and respiration to a weary soul. Amen. All is a symbol of God's grace and mercy. It reminds us of his unwavering love and desire to redeem and restore. It is the abundance of God's blessings and the celebration of the Spirit. First of all, David said eloquently, you prepare a banquet for me while my enemies watch. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Anybody in here, cup running over this morning. Amen. 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 Do you have favor this morning? Amen. Amen. First of all, David picked it up in 45 and 7. You have loved what is right and hate what is wrong. This is why God, your God, has anointed you rather than your companions with the oil of joy. That's why, praise God, you in jobs this morning because you had favor with God. You in places because God gave you favor. You got promotion because God gave you a promotion. Other uh, folks are wondering why they're not in the place you in because they don't have the blessing on their life that God put on your life. You don't need to apologize 
go by the way you act. You be a child of God. Thank you. Thank you. I got faith in this boy. Not only that, David went on and screamed a little bit and said, God has anointed the righteousness with the oil of gladness, which indicates that oil represents the joy that comes from being in God's presence. This morning, if you're in the presence of God, then you should say without a doubt this morning, Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord, for your blessing on me. Are you in His presence this morning? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not only that, David went on and said a little bit more. Amen. The oil symbolizes the sign of joy, represents God's abundant blessings, celebration of His presence. The source of comfort and happiness. The remembrance of joy in time of sorrow. And then there are many times when we get in the battle. There are many times when we can't see what's going on. But I know God lives. I can feel it on the inside of me. I don't know what he's going to do, but I know he's going to work it out. Or it's a symbol of strength and power. I wish I had a witness this morning. First of all, you got to understand, amen. And now, what is this symbol of strength and power? Jesus said eloquently when they asked him, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me to tell the good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce forgiveness to the parts of the sin and the restoring of sight to the blind. So they give those who have been shattered by sin. And to announce the year of the Lord's favor. You don't have to live the way you live. You ain't got to go through the things that you're going through. All you need to do is bow your head. Tell God, I'm sorry. He will remove you and replace you and stand you up. And store you back to power. When my enemy wanted me down, God helped me up. When they didn't want me to make it, God said, be still. Hallelujah. I'm talking about that anointing. He is your vessel with oil this morning. He is your vessel with oil this morning. Are you willing to stand the test of time? Are you willing to tell somebody, I don't know what God's doing, but I know he's already working out. Oh, was symbolized even with Christ. You remember how the woman anointed Jesus' feet with oil, how she wiped them with her hair, how the act of love and devotion. She was simply saying Jesus was king, and not only that, but she recognized the Messiah. She recognized that Jesus was the anointed one. Do you remember how she took the flash of ointment and poured it on his head as he reclined at the table? Do you remember how Matthew told you that she, she anointed Jesus' head with the expensive oil and she was prepared it for his burial? First of all, let me encourage you this morning. Ephesians 5 and 18. Don't get drunk or wine. Which leads to wild living. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Yes. I'm talking about new wine. New wine. I'm so glad this morning I'm drinking new wine. And this new wine I drink, I got the sweetest day over. Amen. I wish I had a witness. Amen. I don't have to worry about what I did yesterday. Amen. Don't worry about what I did last night. Amen. Amen. With that old wine, I have to be careful. But with this new wine. This new wine. Right. Come on, somebody. Amen. First of all, John 16, 12 through 13. I have a lot more to tell you. But that would be too much for you now. Mm. When the spirit of truth comes, he'll guide you into full truth. Mm. He won't speak from his own. He'll speak what he is and tell you about things to come. Amen. Romans 8 14 says, Certainly all who are guided by God's Spirit are God's children. Amen. Peter went on to say in Acts, Repent 
and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Or, oh, in other words, you need to have more oil in your vessel. I can get that oil if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Amen. I don't have to walk with the pigs no more. Amen. I can stand rightfully and tell somebody God loves me, cares about me, and he made me to be who I am. Yeah. Amen. Revelation goes out. Seven through eight. He who overcomes. Look at somebody say, you got to overcome. Yeah. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelievers, abominable, murderers, sexual immortals, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burn with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This morning, I want to tell you, don't you know, no all, no power, no interest. You got to realize this morning that you belong to God, and he created you in his image. And he created you in his image, he made you what you are today. You got to remember this morning that nothing you have belongs to you. All of it belongs to God, because he gave it to you. You got to remember that when you go in the highway and the byway, let your light shine. That somebody can see God in you. And somebody will come ready. Actually, what must they be, do to be saved? No all. No power. No interest. The far from me. I know you're not. I don't want to hear the words. I don't want to hear the words. I want you to understand this morning. I said it. I don't call about hell down here. Definitely don't want to go to hell. Why are you going to stand this morning? You don't have to do it. You don't have to go there. What's the name for you? All you got to do is ask God for forgiveness. Change your ways. Change your ways. Repent simply means change your ways. What are you doing? Change your ways. Be what God created you to be. Amen? Amen. No war. No power. No interest. For those who have not accepted Christ, or need to redeem yourself. Pray the prayer with them. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I've heard your word. Make me over. Change me right now. I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for another opportunity. And then when you go and find the church, become a part of it. Become a church. Become the church. And remember, you got to work. Don't be too busy for God. Amen. 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 Don't be too busy for God. I always look at this as I close. God gives each one of us 24 hours. <coughs> Hello, are you listening to me? 24 hours. Some of us sleep for 8 hours. <laughs> if you're mad, then you already know what you got left. <laughs> Amen. You go to work for 8 hours. And so you say. That's 16. Where you mad at now? What are you doing with those other eight? What are you doing with them? Three times eight, 24, correct? So that means you sit there and say, I got eight hours to watch good smoke, <laughs> days of our lives. How much time for God? How much time for God? Don't sit there and say, I got to go to church Sunday. Because you ain't got to go to church today. God give you an opportunity to go to church. I'll buy you to take that opportunity. Because guess what? It's going to come a day when you go to war and go. And can't go. God has a way of doing things. And when you get there, sing your heart out. Whatever gift God has given you, use it to the best of your ability. Amen? Amen. Quit begging people. Quit begging people to hear you sing. If you who you are, they'll let you sing. 
Are you listening to me? Let you pray. Teach whatever you need to do. But make sure you got all in your best. Amen? No all. No power. No interest. 